Hey friends, before we continue through my first ever read through of the Harry Potter series, just a few quick announcements. First, I have the results of the Potterless t-shirt pre-order house bonus episode competition and the winner is Hufflepuff. So I will be making a bonus episode open to the public about the founding of Hufflepuff, about Helga Hufflepuff, as much spoiler free Hufflepuff information as I can. If you want to get some merch, the shirts are no longer in pre-order form, so you can get them sooner. If you go to bit.ly slash merch on, you can get shirts, you can get posters, you can get enamel pins. Remember, patrons, you get a discount code, but yes, just go to bit.ly slash merch on for some amazing swag. Speaking of exciting things, I'm excited because today's episode is brought to you by Audible. Audible has an unmatched selection of audiobooks, and they're offering you fine folks a free audiobook to go along with a 30-day free trial if you visit audible.com slash potterless or text potterless to 500-500. I'll be discussing a suggestion for what book you could download at the mid-roll, but just remember that's Audible. Get it? Like the word meaning able to be heard? <laughs> oh, I love it. Please keep sponsoring the show. Also, it is the first episode in July, meaning that it is donation time. Here at Potterless, we donate $1 every month for each patron that we have at patreon.com slash Potterless. And at the time of recording, we have 350 patrons, meaning that we will be donating $350 to a charity. And July's charity is RICE's, the Refugee and Immigrant Center for Education and Legal Services. I got a lot of great suggestions about charities to give to, but given the family separation stuff that's happening right now, this just seemed the most relevant. So what this charity does is they provide free and low-cost legal services to underserved immigrant children, families, and refugees in Texas. So the services they provide help prevent families from getting separated, and they are also doing things to bring separated families back together. It's a great organization, and I'm glad that you all can help me help them. And speaking of Patreon supporters, we have new members to welcome to the team. So shout out to Ella Arnold, Frank Aziesler, Charlie Ristall, Reese Clark, Alexandria Pruden, Lauren Barsh, Kevin McCain, Ina Esten Haugen, Ellen Bartlett, Sarah Chavis, Mark Boddy, Kate Worley, Stephanie Schooner, Evie, E, Cody Carson, Kathleen Kowalski, Michelle Gregoire, Amanda McKinney, Laura Samila, Alyssa Cooper, Courtney Busher, Kendra Pape Green, Tiago Costa, Miro, Liege Baptista, Patrick McKinnon, Sydney Bame, Julia Oman, Scott Timms, Anastina Lettinen, Ida Christensen, Catherine Jolly, Charlotte Griffiths, Trisha Tice, Jessa, Heather Fleischman, Miriam Hubsha, Rebecca Ann Wynn Stanley, Melissa Morissette, Jessica David, Amanda Taylor, Krista, and someone made their name Ludo Bagman. Shout out to Jessica Scott, Rachel Guthrie, Christy Glez, Alicia Leon, Alexis Joy, and Jessica Yuna who all upgraded their pledges, and a huge shout out to Lovekesh Longer, Shivani Patel, Ali Madsen, Kalmage, Cassandra Aponte, Roxy Sanchez, Melissa Traver, Amelia Krauss, and Vince Clancy. They joined the ranks of Leanne, Vicky, Aaron, Erica, Calvin, Sadie, Jesse, Natalie, Deborah, Clow, Alex, Rebecca, Frank, Marchese, Motori, Samantha, Juan, Sheila, Jenna, Kieran, Louise, Akansha, Rebecca, Abid, Caitlin, Lee, Benjamin, Rose, Marie, Jill, Maria, Maria, Lisa, Ariel, Romina, Kamel, Anthony, Diego, Andrew, Celeste, Russell, Jenny, Dustin, Katie, Audra, Indiana, Eleanor, Sydney, <gasps> Billy, Ross, Ann, Mikey, Andrea, Nikita, Colette, Chris. Shrina, Jeremy, Stephen, Lala, Chelsea, Taylor, and Sammy, who never step on any cracks, and even if they did, it wouldn't break their mother's backs. If you want to be like one of these amazing people and get stickers, shirts, bonus episodes, just go to patreon.com slash potterless. And without further ado, let's get into episode 45 of Potterless, covering the second half of chapter 14, starring Brandon Grugel, Michael Fache, and Eric Silver of Join the Party. Hello, Internet, and welcome back to another episode of Potterless, the tale of a 26-year-old man reading the Harry Potter series for the first time. My name is Mike Schubert. I'm that 26-year-old man, and I am here joined with the boys of Join the Party, Michael Fache, Brandon Grugel, and Eric Silver. Guys, how's it going? Going good. Boys in the house. <laughs> boys in the house. I'm feeling lucky today. Oh, that's a reference. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, because the chapter. Wow. <laughs> this is off to a great start. <laughs> yeah, now that everyone's stopped listening to this episode, uh, let's just discuss the rest of chapter 14 from Half-Blood Prince, which is Felix Felicis. The first thing that we get is Harry waking up the next day. Ron is still angry, and he is ready to lash out, quote, like a blast-ended scroot. I know that, Fisher, you are going to want to note that Harry woke up post his uh, wet dream about Ginny. <laughs> when we last left off, he had just gone to bed straight 
struggling with his emotions that he's got a big old crush on her. Now, before we talk about this, can I leave the room? <laughs> Immediately cut off. Can I leave the room, please? Because I don't want to hear or be in this conversation. Well, I, I just heard that apparently in the discussion of, of, the, of the first part of this chapter, mm -hmm. this chapter is so big, apparently, that you need so much to cover I mean, it. it. That's also what happens when you have three guests per episode is lots of people talk about Although stuff. a lot does happen. Mm -hmm. That they didn't discuss that. That was just a horrible, disgusting, uh, J.K. Rowling's horrible, disgusting interpretation of, of, of a wet dream. Well, I just, I didn't, I didn't think of it, but I'm glad. That's why we have people like you on the podcast. That, to make sure we don't miss anything. That was, that was the nicest way to say that anyone's ever called fish weird before. <laughs> Truly. Always trying to get different opinions. So yeah, it wakes up, Ron's still angry. They go to Quidditch practice, the last practice before the first match, and Ron is just being an absolute jerk. He yells at Demelza so much so that she starts to cry. So Demelza just in this chapter alone has been punched in the face by Ron and mm -hmm. now brought to tears by Ron. I don't know what Ron has against Demelza, but uh, not looking so great for her in chapter 14. Well, she does exist, so, so <laughs> that, that's a problem for Ron. <laughs> She's near him, that's which, a problem and he does Ron. not like that. Yeah, he doesn't like any of that. I do like in the next part that Harry is like trying to deal with it by being a captain. In the last episode, I know you said a bunch that like, He's a really good captain, mm -hmm. but like he's actually just more of a bro to Ron. He just like yells at the younger people. It's like, oh man, I can't believe that happened to you. That was so hard. And you punched that girl in the face and you made her cry. No, nah, man, you're so good. You're so good at sports. Well, the, the one thing that he does that is good is that he takes Ron aside and basically tells him to stop being so mean. And he does threaten to kick him off the team if he doesn't knock it off. And he does this, I, I believe, in front of the team. So at the very least, he's like, no, not he gonna... doesn't no, say it. Oh, he waited specifically until waits. the rest of the team oh, were no. out of earshot before saying it. Oh, Oh, no, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, and, and he should just... have done it in front of the team. Oh, totally. totally. Yeah. I mean, it's good that he did it, but it would have made Demelza feel better if she got to overhear Harry being like, hey, we're not going to stand for that. Yeah. Oh, man, darn it. But yeah, so Ron doesn't respond to this super well. He ends up playing the whole, like, woe is me card, because after Harry yells at him, Ron's like, oh, I'm going to resign. I'm pathetic. And Harry tries to, like, pep talk Ron out of it, but he's being super, super negative. He even tries to go and he's like, everyone would be so bad if you quit. Everyone would be so bummed out, Ron. And then the narrator's like, the looks on the rest of the team's faces said otherwise. I don't know how J.K. Rowling found my narrative from high school or from middle school sports, <laughs> but I don't appreciate the copyright infringement of my life. Uh, Were you Ron or? Yeah, no, I, oh, I you know, if bad. I didn't win, mm -hmm. I was just going to quit the team mm -hmm. and yeah, um, this is why I don't play sports today. This is why I'm <laughs> a nerd now. Brandon's a bad sport. I'm a bad sport. <laughs> He's bad at sports, bad at sports. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Harry then tries to flip his strategy on a 180 and tries to like yell at Ron to make him like defiant and be like, no, like, brr, but that doesn't work because Ron just like doubles down and agrees with Harry when he starts yelling at him. That's male friendship, though. You just like doing all this dumb shit to like see what will stick. It's like you don't want to talk about feelings. You just try all of these like sideways ways to try to make your friend feel better <laughs> harry's management style and just like skills are like really lacking i thought under like the da stuff like he would be better but he's doing this all so wrong i'm not you know i won't be the first to say ron in this book is kind of a poo face i i think we can face. all agree. hot take <laughs> i think we can all agree he's your language is just uh, I, yeah we tell yeah, you i was talking about wet dreams we, earlier I yeah, we like, are an explicit podcast but please tone it down for us uh, <laughs> i know i think he is a poo face not a shithead i think there's a, there's a very clear difference uh he's a poo face but harry's not like he's he's being a bad friend and like also, it's coming up with like how he's dealing with Ron and Hermione and, and how he interferes, especially in the last part of this, in the last episode, with how he really doesn't back either Ginny or Ron up mm -hmm. when they were arguing, yeah. basically lose. Like, he's the only, he's the main loser there. It's a lose, lose, lose. <laughs> I don't know. Ron got murdered, so I yeah, think well, Ron's the biggest loser in fair. there. <laughs> but no, I see what you're saying. He's like, he he could have a bitter, he, a better management style and approach to this. Yeah. But Harry then at some point finally gets an idea. And I was terrified because I thought it was going to involve Harry convincing Lavender Brown to like sweet talk Ron up, which the book at least made me think was going to happen because the next thing that happens is it's like they go to bed, they wake up the next morning and it's at breakfast and it's like Lavender Brown walked over to Ron and it was like, you're going to, I know you'll be brilliant, Ron. And I was like, oh no, did Harry like talk her into like buttering up Ron? When has it ever been good when Harry has an idea? <laughs> Never. <laughs> he did that. I'm just like, yeah, oh that's God, cool. oh. everyone's gonna die. Voldemort's gonna show up. Has he ever had a good idea? No. Um, the last time God, he had I'm an really idea. Struggling here. 
The last time he had a decent idea was when our episode, uh-huh. when he tried to like talk to Cho Chang and like then deal with the Hermione situation at the same time. Oh, no, but he handled so, like, that so poorly, too. But then he tried to, like, dispel his own name, and then he just ended up getting everyone mad at him all at the same time. I guess specifically, like, if Harry's like, I have a plan. I don't yeah. know that it's ever been well, because the other time he had a plan, Sirius Black got murdered. Yeah. But that is actually not what Harry's plan is. We'll find out what Harry's plan is in a second. Ugh. So he asks Ron what he wants to drink with his breakfast, like, six times, which is too many. <laughs> uh, and Hermione, Wait, what was the line? Was it two uh, or three? Uh, yeah, I guess I, I, I maybe even one. Like, they're at a cafeteria, and, like, everyone should be able just to get their own stuff, like, at the table. But Harry's like, what do you want to drink? Pumpkin juice? Tea? Milk? Uh, Butterbeer? Mead? Like, anything that's liquid? Come on, Ron, please. Uh, this is like, <laughs> if someone said, may I, may I read of from, course. from the tome? Yeah. Tea, Harry asked him. Coffee? Pumpkin juice? Anything, said Ron glumly, taking a moody bite of toast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the descriptions Wait, in this That's my favorite so... line of all time yeah, in 80s literature. Moody ever. bite of toast. <laughs> Skipping ahead, Harry's just like, drink. Hey, drink up. Don't drink that. Drink it. Drink it. It's This is all. It's yeah, just, I mean, just... the thing is, when you're first reading this before you learn what his plan is, at first you're like, wow, Harry's really bad at this. But you learn that he's being bad at this on purpose. So it makes it better. But at first when I was reading this, I was like, wow, subtle much, Harry? Because it was kind of like when Harry was in the room with umbrage mm. and she was like trying to get him to drink the true thing out of the tea and she was like how about you have a sip of tea harry and he was like no i'm okay she's like no i really think you should have a sip of tea he's like now i really don't want you think he learned. <laughs> yeah but i mean i guess he did in reverse he was like oh remember that time so i guess it, it all works out so good work on harry but we'll find out later i really think this uh book has a lot of like making you drink things in weird ways references <laughs> And like trying to get people to drink things. <laughs> anyway, I <laughs> keep that one in your pocket, bud. <laughs> that was good. So, no, that was good. Hermione's at the breakfast as well. And just as Ron is about to take a drink of this pumpkin juice that Harry gave him, Hermione yells that Harry put something in the drink. And Hermione tells Ron, don't drink it. And Ron goes, stop bossing me around because he's mad at Hermione. <laughs> Sorry, <because> Mom. <laughs> yeah, he's mad at Hermione for maybe <laughs> potentially kissing Victor Crumb. So he drinks it in defiance of her. And Hermione then goes on to yell at Harry, saying, you should be expelled for that. But Harry claps back, saying, look who's talking talking confunded anyone lately which ooh, and then hermione storms off angrily which means harry won the argument so many sick burns in this chapter (laughs) is there is it just me or there's a lot of uses of stormed off just to have someone win and then also they went to sleep and the next day it's like a loss of transition like there's there couldn't be other ways to do that I mean, I guess, I, I guess in it makes this sense because they're, they're high schoolers, so like they don't want to actually come to terms with them realizing that they were wrong or admitting they were wrong. So it's like, oh, you're right. I'm going to go to bed. I think it's just a teenager. That's what know, I did when I was a teenager. <laughs> For sure. That's what I do now. Yeah. <laughs> so Hermione storms away, and then the narrator has this gem, which is definitely from Harry's perspective, but it's, quote, Hermione had never really understood what a serious business Quidditch was, which g- gave me a good chuckle. <laughs> Ginny gives Harry a status report of the upcoming game against Slytherin. She says that one of the Slytherin chasers is injured because he took a bludger to the head in yesterday's practice. My question, why didn't he go to Madame Pomfrey? Hey, I have a head injury in a big game yeah, tomorrow. Can you please get- help me? I think he did. Oh, and it just, it's so I see, That's like the injury. That's literally the injury report. Is, oh, okay. Is that, it, he's, yeah. it's so bad that. And this is the next, I mean, this is the next thing mm-hmm. when they also talk about Malfoy going sick. Uh-huh. So it's like, but that they one's have to very get, vague. Yeah. Yeah. I was so suspicious of this. That's yes. very suspicious. Mm-hmm. I also love that Malfoy is such like an asshole. They're like, he's, <laughs> just read this next part. I have many feelings about this. <laughs> so what, uh, what Ginny continues on in her status report is that Malfoy is out as seeker with Harper playing instead Ginny describes Harper as quote he's in my year and he's an idiot because Ginny <laughs> Weasley is perfect but Harry as Eric pointed out is suspicious of this because the last time that Malfoy had some sort of injury he somehow which I freaked out about got the match rescheduled which I still don't understand how that went down but but Harry, Harry Quidditch is it. serious business <laughs> Quidditch is serious very business important if you even talk about this as like a varsity sport yeah imagine like it, it's inter school and you're like mm, I'm sick can we do this <laughs> on a do it different another- day like I don't know if this is supposed to like underscore the fact that like Quidditch is stupid and by like the whims of like just whatever the houses say, mm-hmm. or if like Malfoy is such a butthole and like it's pre- and has like enough power in the school that he can just like do whatever he wants. The one the one thing that I could understand Malfoy doing is that because the injury came from Buckbeak, it like wasn't 
I mean, it was his fault, but he was trying to claim that it wasn't his fault and it wasn't fair. And since they only play each other once each time, there's four Quidditch games per team a year. Stupid. It's very silly. So I guess it would oh, be Oh, I never easy. did the math on that. You're absolutely right. This yeah, they only dumb. play each other once. Well, so I guess that's they can how reschedule. The schedule, the schedule can be moved <laughs> anytime you're at the school year. It's fine. So that's okay. The next game isn't for two more months. I love in Friday Night Lights how they all practice and then Tim Riggins is like, oh man, I got ACT class. I can't play coach. <laughs> and then let's move it to the next week because there are only four football games. <laughs> so, I get this reference. <laughs> yeah, so do I. Harry is suspicious because if, why would Malfoy get this one game postponed when he was injured slash sick, but now he isn't, so Harry thinks he's up to something, which I think is well. Is there a certain thing you wanted to point out as being suspect, like a particular quote no, or just, I just the like, general just vibe that whole thing Malfoy? was weird. I was going to actually say, Mike, this seems pretty lucky to me. Are you just going to keep saying the word lucky? Yes, yeah, chapter is. Is, 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 is going to do lucky. that. This is all I do. This is oh, my shtick. Man. That's why he's so beloved on our show. You also, um, in quotes, <laughs> you know, you, you did miss an important part of, you know, talking about what's happening with the day and the luck situation uh -huh. is. Hey, what's the luck situation? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that the wonderful feature, one of my favorite features, I'm not saying facetiously, of uh -huh. the sky of the Great Hall is clear. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can tell that it's, gonna, it's, that it's a clear day. I have a question, Mike. Uh-huh. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why does the ceiling of the Grand Hall match what's outside? It's one of the things I hate most about Hogwarts. Is, is that they have like the weather channel on the ceiling? Is the ceiling? It's that ceiling. I have a lot of problems with the ceiling. And Can you name them? Yes. <laughs> One. Why? Two. Mm -hmm. Of all the things you could do for decoration, of all the things you could do for utility, of all the ways you're using magic, magic is being exp like used. Someone is, is, is doing this or mm -hmm. somehow has done this. I guess I'm not explaining correctly how much I hate this. This sounds lovely to me. I'm very confused. I think it's, I think it's cool. It's like a no-risk sunroof. Yeah. Where if it's raining, you're like, oh, okay, whatever. Or if it was snowing, you can like, look. But they also do use the ceiling for other cool stuff. They have all the During decorations the parties, and stuff for parties yeah. and, and the feasts. And I'm assuming that they had like fireworks going off when Durmstrang went in. But that's at least just from the movie where they're like hitting the, the <laughs> staffs on the <laughs> ground. <laughs> yeah. And then John Cena comes in. <laughs> you know what? I, I realize why I hate it. It's like in cruise ships... <laughs> In cruise ships or uh -huh. in like office buildings or apartments where you'll have that screen that looks like it's outside uh, and it's not, mm. it seems it's like very. Uh, you know, those aren't actually magical, right? <laughs> I, I know they're not magical. I just hate them because uh. it makes me just sad. Well, it's lucky you figured it out. Okay. All right. So the game Let's of Quidditch on. begins uh, on the field. Harry can hear the roar of Luna's lion topped hat, which is so good. I forgot that that had exists. So I'm glad that I got to be reminded that it's still there. It's a good hat. The match begins and we learn that Lee Jordan is not the announcer anymore, which I didn't realize. I forgot that he graduated because he is two years older than Harry. Does like anyone graduate from Hogwarts? I just assume everyone dies. Whoa. <laughs> Seriously. Like no one ever goes off and has like a productive career. I don't know. Other Charlie Weasley's killing it. But like other than the Weasleys. Bill Weasley's killing it. And then like oh, Oliver no. Wood, is he killing it? Oliver Wood's in like the G League of I thought he was Quidditch. on a good team. I thought it was a big deal that he's on the, I think, you know. Well, because Quidditch mirrors the soccer system. Yes. So it's like he's not on a national premier, He's on not a premier, premier league team. Exactly. He's like in the G League. Mm -hmm. for, for such haters of Quidditch. <laughs> if it was a good sport, he would be a lot of bad ball. <laughs> So, Lee Jordan's not the announcer anymore, and instead it's everyone's least favorite Hufflepuff, Zacharias Smith. I don't know how he got the job, but he continues his atrociousness that has been present for his entire existence in this book series by making a snide remark at Ron when he makes a save, saying, quote, he's bound to get lucky at some point, I suppose. He's bound to get what? Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, so also, Ron suspects at this point that something's happened. I don't know. They never say if Ron does it, but Harry does mutter to himself, that's right, Smith, he is, basically heavily implying that Harry has poured Felix Felicis, which is that good luck potion that he got from Slughorn for doing the best potion thing by following someone else's instructions in his book. He got that, so it's heavily implying that he poured that into Ron's drink to make him lucky. So this, at this point, I was like, no, Harry, this is dumb. Like, he basically just gave Ron steroids before the match. Like, <laughs> the oh, cool. only one match. Like, he could have done mm -hmm. something much more important, much more. Also, isn't Zacharias a player for Hufflepuff? Because um, wouldn't that be a conflict he, of interest? I don't know how extracurricular stuff works. He's the announcer, so it doesn't really matter that much. I it guess. obviously doesn't matter if you can just move a match because Malfoy like <laughs> stubbed his toe. My arms hurt. He's like, mm, it's cloudy. I don't like playing in the clouds. <laughs> so Smith goes on to smack talk Coot, which is one of Gryffindor's new beaters. And Harry, this is another example of Harry not being the best captain. He's like, hey, Coot, hit a bludger at him. And Coot's like, no, that would be a waste. <laughs> so Coot instead takes his anger out 
on the situation by hitting the bludger at their seeker, which is far more productive. Oh, yes, I'm angry about the situation. Why don't I hit the bludger at the person I'm supposed to hit the bludger at, not yeah, play the, the announcer? Oh, sick burn. <laughs> <laughs> so Gryffindor is scoring like crazy. Ron is saving everything. The chance of Weasley is our king erupt from the Gryffindor side. And Ron, after saving a goal, pretends to conduct the crowd, which is... So good. Oh, that one eighty turn. I'm really happy about it. That 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 felt good. Mm -hmm. I have no like concept of the pacing of Quidditch. Uh -huh. It's like how do you have time to like not do anything <laughs> when you're a goalie? It's not like soccer where you have to like set it up. Mm -hmm. It's like you don't have time to brag. There is going to be another quaffle coming at your face in like two seconds. Well, there is only From one. Sides, there's though. only one quaffle. But, can, but, but you can also anywhere. just get hit uh -huh. any at any point. Right. That is the thing because it's like you're you're playing hockey, but the net is on both sides. Yeah, the fact that there's three rings it's makes it you're wild. constantly moving a lot. It is not simple. This is a bad sport. <laughs> if, if it could be so good. If I'm a beater, I'm constantly either trying to hit the keeper or the seeker constantly. Or protect your team because you also have to get the bludgers and hit them so that they're not hitting your friends. It's a very active sport for everyone except for the seekers who are just like sitting chilling not doing anything apparently like, oh that gold thing <laughs> that's the only i guess it's the only position where you get to relax good thing it's the most important one harper the seeker from slytherin collides with harry calling ron his quote blood trader friend can we can we just like not be racist for like a couple chapters slytherin? oh let me look like, through hold the, on let yeah, me look let, through all of harry through potter yeah. 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 I'm, I'm really sorry just give me one second uh, I'm just hold on no there's no it. good references <laughs> like slytherin not being the racist house like that's just part of who uh, he is oh gosh and i know people are going to complain to stuff on twitter but let me let me just clarify my stance on this for everyone i think that there are good slytherins that exist i think that people in real life who identify slytherin are good in the books we only get examples of bad ones and that's it we never learn about the nice ones if there are any so i'm just saying the only slytherins we learn about are like pansy parkinson and draco malfoy and crab and goyle and even slughorn is kind of sketchy and snape isn't the best you know Not i mean it has to be that there are good slytherins because they're allowed to have a house at hogwarts so there must exist it's sure. just we only ever hear of the worst because mm -hmm. who wants to hear about a nice racist you know like who, who does i mean I, w I wouldn't mind a paragraph where we just see someone like doing one good deed or even just nicely like, be nicely racist? cutting a meal and eating it and just drinking like fine just one paragraph jimmy smith at slytherin was perfectly normal yeah. he didn't like he just... that malfoy was mean to people all the time <laughs> but anyway said, malfoy but... then walks down the hallway <laughs> jeremy smith looked up in the sky saw the saw the dark mark and was like well, i'm gonna go back to eating my burrito <laughs> and eat the burrito so, of course, Madam Hooch does not see this happen. Has she ever seen whenever, like, these shenanigans have happened? There were definitely, yes. In the match when Slytherin somehow gets a bunch of new substitutes for the Gryffindor match in, like, the second or third book when they're, like, it notes that Slytherin just got a lot of large people to, like, beat people up. And the only way that, like, Gryffindor gets enough points is they keep scoring penalty shots. They bring it up that, like, it was a really dirty game with, like, lots of fouls being thrown back mm -hmm. and forth. Okay. That's the only time that it's been cool. Clear. I, that might honestly be the only match where they've called a foul. I guess she just drinks too much of that hooch oh, before games. Oh, nice. Yay. <laughs> Lucky for me, <laughs> oh, I was no. able to oh, say no. this. No. Oh, no. Fish, can I leave you in this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> just he's mine now in the bag of every yeah, shoes you take him. <laughs> <laughs> so harper then actually sees the snitch and darts towards it harry doesn't think that this is true because zachariah smith says it over in the announcement and harry's like oh yeah right sure but then he looks and he's like oh no that is the snitch so harry goes and flies after him harry is behind and is like totally not going to get the snitch very heavily implied that harry's first game where he's not attacked by something he will lose which has so far not happened yet even though gryffindor has been murdering it the whole game they're up by a hundred points not which enough. somehow is not a safe lead not enough oh my goodness they're up by 100 not good enough and harry decides to go for the hail mary play of just yelling trash talk at the seeker and he goes hey harper how much did malfoy pay you to come on instead of him which is not, not even not good, good trash that talk. Great. <laughs> oi harper, oi, harper. <laughs> okay it's heavily implied uh, straight up like just seeing that there's some kids who go to Hogwarts who don't have as much money as others Ron mm -hmm. has to like use secondhand stuff mm -hmm. Harry has a bajillion it has infinite money so yes. he can just like buy all the nicest things if strictly speaking like there's nothing fishy going on with the whole Malfoy situation 
Harry's just being a classist and just yeah. like really like <laughs> mean to someone who potentially like did do it for money. Like, wh- why is that a joke? Why is that your your thing to say? Well, he has he has no perspective on this. He also has no parents. Wow, that's really insensitive. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the weird thing about it, <laughs> it's his fault he doesn't have parents because he was born. Oh. Oh. The weird thing about Team Neville. The weird, <laughs> the weird thing about this insult, it seems like being the seeker is a very highly coveted position. So I don't think that Malfoy would have to pay him anything. Like most people at Slytherin, if they were like, hey, do you want to be the seeker in the match against Gryffindor? They'd be like, hell yeah, that sounds great. I feel like there could have been a whole lot of different insults to throw. Regardless, it works because Harper goes, what? And he misses the snitch. Ooh. Harry swarms in, swoops in ahead of him, snatches it, and the game ends. It is ridiculous how much plot armor Harry has. Not even <laughs> plot armor, it's just like plot, like jersey, good, plot good. shoes. Plot sneakers. Plot, plot sneakers. <laughs> plot sneakers. Keep going. Sorry. More, more options. <laughs> plot headbands. Yeah, okay. uh, three more. Plot. Broom. Uh-huh. Plot scar. That's true. Uh, mm-hmm. That's the very true. true. Wow. The broom yeah. too, actually. That's true. And then plot face. Guys, <laughs> I don't understand the assistance of Harry to win every single game that he doesn't get attacked by Dementors in. <laughs> 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 like, I feel like this match would have been more interesting if Harry doesn't catch the snitch because then they lose and it wasn't Ron's fault because Ron saved every goal. Like, I think it'd be more compelling if it's like, fuck, I messed up because I wasn't paying super full attention to catching the snitch. The rest of my team killed it. I think that would make for a compelling story. And because they had talked earlier about, like, Harry feeling bad that he had picked Dean to Mm -hmm. play and... You know, if they win, no one's going to care. But if yeah. we lose, everyone's going to care and we got to prove ourselves. It would actually have like story. Re- it would have a relevance and like an interesting twist to the to the like Gryffindor like storyline that mm-hmm. would be, I don't know, interesting, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? Gr- <laughs> but that would imply that like Harry ever has any consequences for his actions ever. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, but I, his but parents I, died. <laughs> you can't keep saying that. You just said it was his fault. <laughs> it was his fault for being born. Oh, no. no. God. Hashtag team now. Uh, I mean, it makes sense. And this is why Quidditch isn't actually a sport, but it's a... <laughs> no. Wait, this is the reason why it's not no, a sport? No, well, this is a, it's a, just it's a It's not the device. magic of the brooms or anything. It's, <laughs> it's a plot device. It is. It is, which is true. This proves because, like, she doesn't want to reckon with the fact of, like, how people treat points versus wins and losses in Quidditch. Mm-hmm. Because, like, if this was, like... I kind of like hockey where it's like you have wins but you also have points mm-hmm. and like that's what determines playoff stuff also in soccer in where, soccer exactly where it's also yeah. goals versus they, they do all the tiebreakers and exactly stuff, right? and so like that, that would be important yeah. about if it's like points scored with quaffle and then like quit it and then um snitch yeah. wins or losses or like if wins I and mean, losses were different. I mean, she does have that in the system, which is important. She does like mention like whoever like is the Quidditch champion for the school year is just whoever has the most points. Well, I, so, I mean, what I'm saying is like this needs to be a fucking party. So yeah. like they need to, Ron needs to do well and they have to be, and they have to win so that like they are unequivocally getting down. Yeah, yeah instead of now just they're getting it's down to one person. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Because that would be like nuanced and conf- and like interesting if like <laughs> Harry had to but think about stuff. But his parents died. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's just like <laughs> butterbeer for everyone. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah, so, oh, okay. No, you're right. She does have to make this happen so that the crazy party can happen because it is a good point that they have won this match 250 to zero, oh. which is bonkers. Yeah. So, like that is off the chain win. So I guess that makes sense of why they go hog wild next. I like that Hogwarts Hogwild. Oh wow! Oh wow! <laughs> See, oh. this is my mind, but you did a good job. There. I didn't. Wow! Look at Hogwild is the is like the 2015 um, slogan of the spring break where everyone goes to Hogsmeade. Nice. Oh. And they all get nice. and they all get nice. tanked off. Tank. Like, yeah. Hogs wild. It's, Hog it's wild re- at Hogsmeade. It's really lucky that you said that. Oh god. Damn. Okay. Uh, so, no. so Ginny. Sp- so they win the match. Ginny speeds off, and Harry's like, "Ginny, where are you going?" You find out that she's rams into the commentator's podium and destroys it like Such literally smashes badass. it to bits and Zacharias is lying under piles of just plywood two by fours whatever oh. like a bunch of wood he's trapped under it and then McGonagall's like Ginny what the heck was that and she goes oh sorry forgot to break professor it's like oh my god Ginny Weasley I didn't think she could get any better <laughs> she is so amazing is she like the actual hero of these yes, stories yes. Yeah. It's, 100%. Her, it's like yeah. Hermione's like the true hero she you know keeps everything on track 
that yeah. helps Harry out so much, is always right about stuff. But Ginny is like my favorite. She's like mm. the best. Like yeah. Hermione's like the true hero, but Ginny is just so good. Uh, it's amazing. Also, this and other events during Quidditch games make me realize I will never want to actually watch Quidditch live. It would be Ever. so weird. It's dangerous. It's very hard to watch. And height. <laughs> They're always like flying the around. The cameras would be so hard. Yeah. The, the main thing, which I find very interesting and was something that I was confused about in the World Cup, is like, where are the good seats? <laughs> <laughs> like, because they say in the World Cup, they, they're up in the box, which are all the way up, which in theory should be the good seats because that's where the snitch happening is going on. But that's only like one part of the game. If you're so high up that you can't see all the quaffle stuff going down, but that's the like, only you're missing out some cool stuff. But it's the only but the important yeah. part of the game. Well, here's the thing, though. They exist in the in a world with soccer. They exist in a world with all these other sports. They do, yeah. Where does this not... Why... What did they take? Which one came first? Uh, I don't know. Um, it, I don't know timeline wise. Why is this not? Is this just a rejection of everything muggle? Like that they're like, like no, we can't play. We soccer, can't play we a can't good play. sport because the the regular human people have decided to have already done good sports. Yeah, so we have to play it's this not silly one. I don't understand. This. There yeah. is a book that J.K. Rowling wrote. That's Quidditch just, throughout the ages. Yeah, oh, I'm I had so that one. excited it's... to read it. It's gonna be after when I start doing spinoff books for Potter. Let's nice. doing all the books, then the movies, and all the spinoff stuff, then all the things like Harry Potter musical and all that but yeah oh, Quidditch oh, throughout the ages good. that's very, gonna take like 38 good. episodes it's gonna be great uh yeah like hey everyone today we're gonna be talking about page one of Quidditch throughout the ages <laughs> I think you need book oh, oh, I don't like this book you need like every guest you've ever had to come back just to do a part of it just so that everyone can have their take on like why it's oh, the worst oh god the funniest emails hi uh you know Kelly could you just please read page three uh, that's all yeah that's it's gonna be enough discussion I have 12 pages of notes whoa guys Excuse me, if I could just step in for a second, it's me editing, Mike. Uh, we have a very important sponsorship to announce, so that means it's time for Wingardium Ad Ridosa. Commutes are awful. Whether you're in traffic hoping you don't get rear-ended, or in public transit hoping sweaty people don't lean against you, dealing with the garbage humans around you can be incredibly stressful. But you know what isn't stressful? Escaping into a literary wonderland by listening to an audiobook from Audible. The only time an audiobook would be stressful is if you were listening to a captivating thriller, much like my suggestion for this episode. One of Us is Lying tells the tale of how five high school students enter detention, but only four make it out alive. E.W. calls it The Breakfast Club meets Pretty Little Liars, and those are two of my favorite things ever, so I cannot wait to dive into what sounds like a perfect novel. Potterless listeners can download One of Us is Lying or one of countless audio programs available on Audible for free by visiting audible.com slash potterless or texting potterless to 500-500. Use one of those codes and you'll start a 30-day free trial with Audible and get a free audiobook as well. Download it to your phone and make your commute less atrocious and escape from those garbage humans around you. Remember Remember, that's audible.com slash potterless or potterless in a text to 500-500. And now, back to the multitudes. So Harry hugs the whole team and hugs Ginny, but then quickly like breaks away and avoids looking at her because he loves her. Uh, obviously, everybody's super happy. Dean says that there's going to be a party up in the common room nice. and everybody leaves the locker room to go up. And Hermione comes in, which like, what? Like, I don't. First off, she can just go into the locker room. She's not on the team. Second, I don't know if there's a boys locker room and a girls locker room or if it's just Quidditch team locker room. But like Hermione can just like stroll in and be like, hey, without being like, hey, guys, is it cool if I come in? Like, what if they were naked? and just like hey guys ah! like I'm baffled by this <laughs> I have nothing to say <laughs> I don't know. let's keep, we'll just let's keep, keep going so Hermione comes in and gets mad at Harry for cheating which is very valid because at this point I was like yeah Harry effectively just gave Ron some steroids she reminds Harry that Slughorn said it is illegal to use it during sporting matches. There's a great quote where it's a, <laughs> where she goes, yes, you did, Harry, and that's why everything went right. There were Slytherin players missing, and Ron saved everything. Harry plays coy for a moment before telling them he didn't really put the potion into Ron's drink, explaining that Ron saved everything just because he felt lucky and confident, which is literally the plot of Space Jam. Thank you for <laughs> finally getting it. It's yeah. Space Jam the movie. Ugh. It's just it's, the movie of Space Jam just, of Michael Jordan, and, Bugs Bunny, and Friends. Okay, Space Jam came out in what, 1995? I, in 1996. 1996. And what year was this It was published July 6th, 2005. Ooh, yeah, like nine no. years. And I get that the placebo effect is like a common thing. Obviously, you can't copyright the placebo effect. 
But the fact that in Space Jam, for everyone who hasn't seen it, stop listening to this podcast and go watch Space Jam. Um, on, like, what are you doing? You miss a lot of references yeah, yeah, yeah. if you so, <laughs> listen to Space Jam. Uh, so Space, Space, Space Jam, Jam yeah. the plot is the Looney Tunes have to play basketball with Michael Jordan to stop him from becoming a slave. This is a really uh, this good. Is this is the plot. So good. It's so, so good. And they're playing very poorly. At halftime, Bugs Bunny takes a Gatorade bottle that is filled with just water, but he writes on it Michael's secret stuff on it, and they're like, what's this? And they're like, oh, this is what Michael Jordan drinks before basketball games to make him so good. All the Looney Tunes drink it, then they play really good basketball, then at the end, they're like, it was water the whole time. So this is very similar, that it's a drink, it's something that's supposed to make you better, it's heavily implied that it's gonna make you better and stuff, and then it's like, no, you you had it inside you the whole time. I get that it's common trope, so you can't like hit Jake Hill along with a plagiarism charm, but come on, this is the plot of Space Jam. I gotta say, this is a very good use of like Chekhov's gun, Chekhov's yeah, secret nice. stuff. Nice. Yeah, nice. yes, yes, yes. yes. It's a good yes. use of that. Like it happened in the beginning, and mm. then this is a good use of it. Um, can I read a section? Sure. Okay. This is um, <laughs> Harry shook his head. Ron gaped at him at a moment, then rounded on Hermione, imitating her voice. You added fixes for leases to Ron's juice this morning. That's why he saved everything. See, I can save goals without help, Hermione. I read that four times. I still couldn't tell who said that. Who said that? Ron, Ron said that Ron because said Ron, Ron is the only one who has a bad Hermione impression. I honestly, <laughs> I like your Ron impression of of Ron's Hermione impression. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, <laughs> I imagine he also does like ah right before he says it. Like you can't use that. That's against the rule. <laughs> also, like, what a sick burn. Mm -hmm. This is like peak teenage burn that it, like you're intentionally twisting someone's words because you want to hurt them. Like you, oh wow! You can't, have, you couldn't believe that I could use that. Like, goddamn, Ron, going for the jugular. <laughs> yeah, so Why he's you not cry. You made another girl cry. Ron's yeah. not nice, right? Like he's just not nice. He slammed mm. someone's like potion, like bottle of something down when he was yeah, the little girl when the, he was the mad about girl. Jenny. Like, he, like he's just a mean person. I think this is Ron's angsty book. Where the fifth one was Harry's angsty book. I think this is Ron's turn to be really angsty. Maybe it's just like a late uh, bloomer in his angstiness. What? What is it? Amanda McLaughlin making a big face. Wait till Deathly Hallows. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wait till oh, Deathly Hallows. Yeah, oh, yeah. Fun. This is just like, this is oh, pre. This is, this is like pre the okay. evolution. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. It gets uh, So, yeah. So, after Ron does this mocking tone to Hermione, he storms out. Harry is stunned Wait, that she his... only <laughs> And she stormed out of the changing room. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it's not even a locker room. It's a changing room. room. So, clearly, they were yeah. naked. They were absolutely <laughs> naked. Also, why? Cannon. Why was oh, it's no. Why was Ron and Harry just alone together after the entire team has already changed and they're still changing? <laughs> I, I mean, no, I'm fine. I it's okay. It's, fine. it's what, a lot yeah, worse. What are you of painting? A, it's a lot worse uh, of an invitation if you're naked while you're doing it. Amanda's <laughs> making some. No, so, no, we'll edit it. We'll cut it. We'll cut it. Cut it. Uh, so, so Harry is flabbergasted that his plan backfired. But it's funny because like he has this weird thing where he's like, "What? We won the Quidditch game. How did this not work? Like, it's not about." It's it's not about like friendship or anything like that. He's like, what? We won. Shouldn't everyone be happy and completely carefree? But it's this weird thing where like his plan perfectly worked for all of like the things that were supposed to happen. But his overarching goal was trying to get all his friends to like each other. And it didn't work. It's so good. And he called this earlier when he said that Hermione doesn't understand that Quidditch is serious business. Mm -hmm. He's, he knows already that yeah. she won't care. It's Harry's and fault. yet he does this anyway, knowing mm -hmm. that she would care that he would break such a big rule and then... Ugh, yeah, that is a weird. logic train. He was overly talking about like drink it, drink it, drink it, drink it, so that Hermione would be like, hey, that's against the rules. Oh, yeah. How does Harry think that Hermione's biggest pet peeve, which is people not following the rules, like, look how mad she is at him using a book that is legitimately more correct than a textbook. Yeah. But she still <laughs> hates it because it's not the rules. So Harry's like, all right, I have this sweet plan to make Hermione and Ron like each other. I'm going to get Hermione to do the thing she hates the most in the world. Ugh. And then Ron is going to be a pompous asshole about it because that's exactly what Ron does when Why he does something he good and he's like this is gonna work no 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 this is not that's not the plan this is what I was saying before is that Harry doesn't care about everyone else he, he just, just wants, wants Ron to feel <laughs> better uh, he doesn't that's why he's he's using the thing in front of him he's using Hermione because he knows oh, Hermione's gonna get on his case God. because it's gonna no matter how bad he is he doesn't have good sleight of hand but like he can use Hermione as a distraction but why does he want Ron to feel better because he wants he to win the game he just wants his bro to feel better yeah. but I think he just wants to win the game I don't think he cares about Ron either I, no. it, it's it, it's, it's a both. weird it's mix I it's think both. it's both 
but yeah he does like always have this favoritism during Ron. but i do agree with you Grisa. like if you have harry's like things that are most important i kind of feel like ron being happy and winning quidditch are like 1a and 1b well yeah. i think they're, totally, you know, those totally. two things are related to each yes, other yes right because ron he can't cares. win unless ron is happy and ron that's what cares i mean yeah, yeah quidditch therefore he need, the only way it to get ron happy it might be is like one of quidditch. those like circle things where it's thing. like yeah. it's you, you know, know the only example i can think is the awesome powers fed bastard like i'm unhappy <laughs> because i eat i eat because i'm unhappy there's got to be a more professional thing of this but <laughs> it's like no that's it that is in textbooks in college that's what i get yeah you just open up rhetoric books like oh fat bastard oh yes the fat bastard premises <laughs> I, I just am like there's literally nothing else happening in this world that this is the most important thing that he expends so much time and energy in this there's nothing like i just it's so frustrating oh this okay this was a thing because i didn't get to talk about the first half because yeah. all of the sick burns but this shows that this book is no longer for children yes. for the 10 11 12 mm -hmm. year olds yeah. who read the first three this is a firmly a ya novel mm -hmm. this is about just as much as it's about like magic and the and the ministry which is probably why everything's not actually that developed everything is just this is a high school book this is a book about relationships in sports at high school i don't think this is the first one but this is a book definitely written after harry potter became really big yes. in yeah. america yeah. Mm -hmm. five and six five and six yeah. because five is like oh i have to do world building yeah and six <laughs> is like all oh, these teens love this yeah and, and and i think also then there's a connection to why the space jam reference is there because <laughs> it was a so successful movie it was so successful <laughs> And the age that the majority of the audience reading this book would be yeah. would be people who watch Space Jam. So not to lift it, not uh, lifting it, but borrow heavily sure, or sure, whatever. Sure, sure. I think there's a connection there. Mm. And you know what? Respect on J.K. Rowling, knowing her audience. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> Space Jam it. is the greatest film of all time. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Oscar so eternally. Yeah. yeah, I mean, everything borrows from it. Every story of all time. Everything is basically just a... Everything leads I mean, back I'm to Space Jam. I'm not wearing a tinfoil hat, but like, I am. Yeah. <laughs> so Hermione is... Very upset. She's on the verge of tears because Ron has just been treating her like a jerk. So Ron stormed out of the changing room first. Then Hermione stormed out after. And then it's just Harry by himself. Naked. <laughs> Naked. <laughs> thinking, <laughs> thinking like, oh, goodness, like, why did this not work? I don't get it. And, he, and he's wondering, are they ever going to be friends again? And it's like, Harry, it's complicated. Like, this is love. You got to give them time. But and... Harry's only example of love previously was with Cho Chang. And Ugh. they don't talk to each other now. So thus, mm -hmm. mm, this will only end badly. Yeah. He doesn't know what to tell her money or explain why Ron is mad. He's like, I can't tell her that it's just because of the Victor Crumb thing. So he's just like at this weird you or, know, situation where he doesn't know what to do. may I offer an alternate? Uh, oh, no. oh no. He could just tell her it's because of okay. that. Right, no. What I wrote <laughs> legitimately in my book, I wrote by that uh, just tell her. But he says like, Victor Crumb thing that happened literally two years ago. But mm -hmm. there's so many references of Hermione saying or her not understanding why Ron's being such an ass to her. If she understood it was because of this thing, no matter how stupid, that could give her age Agency and information to do something about it. Yeah. And she's not just like, I don't know what's happening. I, everyone's yeah. just being mean. To I me. definitely agree with Fisher because it's like one of those things where you got to just go up to her mind and be like, look, this is super dumb and I'm on your side. But this is why Ron is mad at you. You just got to do it. So and she this can, is like... why Harry's not a good friend. <laughs> All right. I, have a, I have an example. Sure. <gasps> oh All my. right. When uh, you're a teenager. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. As I we don't all think are. I ever was. No, Fish <laughs> has been cryogenically frozen at 57 for his entire life. But like you, the other two, you know, when you're going through things as a teenager, and even though you know that other people are going through it at the same time, I'm going to say, because boys in the house, like, boys in the house. When you get your first mustache hairs, right? Mm -hmm. And you like don't know what so to do with it. So last week for me. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know what to do with it, and you like don't want to comb tell, it, right? <laughs> you, you, yeah, you, you groom it out. And you don't want to be like, oh, should I shave it? How do I shave it? And you know that there are other boys who are dealing with the same exact thing, but you just assume that either, A, you are the only person who's dealing with it, or B, everyone is having the same problems and no one has a good solution. So Harry mistakes himself and thinks like, mm, Hermione's not going to be able to deal with this thing. Mm. But Hermione is obviously more emotionally prepared, yeah. so that would be a good idea. But he's just like... He's a teenage boy. If this was Eric Silver in the Goblet of Fire, <laughs> I would do the same dumb shit. Wait, but Harry if it was the Goblet of Fire, would you be in the Trivers of Tournament? Yeah, because... <laughs> <laughs> I would Did you put your name into the, in the Goblet? <laughs> Eric Silver, I want to win! I want to win! I love games! I mean, you're, you're right. I mean, you're absolutely right. I would hope that Harry could be better. Obviously, that is a dumb hope. Yeah. And, and, and all of his previous actions make that, like, unreasonable for me to hope. But I don't, I don't know. Like, he is aware that his method isn't working. Like, he's conscious of that. And instead of just trying a different way, he doesn't. And he doubles down and triples down and quadruples down on this 
Uh, it'll work out. Have you ever doubled back on a thing that you thought wasn't working? Constantly. I ne- no, you double <laughs> down. You keep making the same mistakes. <laughs> oh, no. If you mean the same mistakes like saying the same joke over and over again, yes. Or like <laughs> really <laughs> thinking it was Ludo Bagman, even though you started to see before your eyes that it certainly wasn't, but you, you had know, to I've have I've never hope. had that problem. Oh, I certainly this did. This is only you. <laughs> I'm I want the you only human only in the world. You. Lucky uh, for you. Oh, God. Uh, okay. uh, Thank you for saying that so we can move on. Um, so they're, they're at the party, and... As Harry predicted, everybody loves him again because they won. And, I mean, to be fair, they did win 250 to zero, which is a lot. The Creevies are there being annoying. There's a bunch of girls surrounding and giggling about him. There's also Ramilda Vane there who's trying to, like, hint at Harry inviting her to the Christmas party, Mm -hmm. which I want to, like, know what other people think about the Slug Club. If I was, like, a non-Slug Club kid and that that was going on, I'd be like, yo, fuck this noise. I wouldn't be like, hey, Harry, can you get me in? I'd be like, yo, let's have a not-Slug Club party where we invite everyone because we don't suck. Uh, But it's one of those things where it's like Hermione dispelled the magic of it. Mm. If you didn't know anyone who had actually been there, you would think this was tight as fuck. Uh-huh. Uh, I mean, I don't know. You know. If I found out why those people got invited, I'd be like, this is dumb because it's just like a, I have a famous relative club or people have said that I'm going to be fancy and important club, which I'd just be like, eh, that's so dumb. Yeah. It's just like not a merit based club. It's, I get I well, mean, people don't think know it's what? dope. This is, you know, J.K. Rowling is British. There's a lot of classist themes throughout Ooh, all of these books. Yeah. This is a very like this fits in the world of England. Like mm-hmm. I, it makes sense to me for it to live there. But as an American, obviously, I well, I well, American. Whatever yeah, I, am, I don't like. Only it. in the America are you rated only no, on their meritocracy. No, but you know, it's just it's, it's a very different cultural. Uh, yes, I know. Yes, there's only them in America, you. but there's this there's this very like classist thing, and that's why Hermione being part of it is a big deal anyway, and why it does shatter the like norms that people have had of it that all of existing in just this book or whatever, but. I got you. Yeah, I got you. I was just... I know. The American <laughs> dream's a lot. It's good goof. Oof. Good bits. Yeah. Uh, so Harry is looking for Ron, but finds Ginny. And Ginny's like looking for Ron. He's Oof. over there, the filthy hypocrite. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Ginny, Ginny is like... In G- my head, Ginny's lord at this point. She's uh, just oh. like... She goes into like clubs and she's wearing like sweatpants and just like hanging out. <laughs> and Ginny has a pygmy puff on her shoulder mm. and a cat at her feet at like the most banging party in Gryffindor history. She's killing it. I love it. I love it so much. She's so good. She's so good. Harry sees him, quote, wrapped so closely around Lavender Brown, it was hard to tell whose hands were whose. Now, um, is this... Is this why they recast Lavender Brown as a white girl in the sixth movie? Because it was like, oh, she's important now. Like, now we got to make her white. Did they do well, that? Oh, yeah. my God. So she was oh, yeah. black for the first five movies, or whichever one she was in. She wasn't in every single movie. Yeah. For the first five, Lavender Brown, black actress playing her. And then sixth movie, they're like, oh, she's, like, kind of important now. What if we made her white? Which is like, uh... why? But, like, I guess that would be the only reasoning. But, like, that is super stupid and dumb and the worst. Uh, it's the one hate on the movies or not for like casting all white people in all the roles like they don't necessarily say that you know but you can't I don't think it's just at all when people were mad that Hermione was cast as a black woman mm. in the Cursed Child because like yeah. yo there's no explicit point in the book where they're like Hermione is white so it's totally fine that being said of the things in the movies, I do think it is a problem that they didn't have a lot of the characters that are people of color have any sort of importance, even right. though there are some that are more important, uh, like Angelina Johnson stuff, barely in the movies at all. Yeah. You have this situation. This is the one that stands out to me as really sketchy and suspicious in the movies, because it's like, she was black until she became important, and now she's white. And it's like, why did you, like, why? Why did we do this? And don't give me the, like, she was the best actress bullshit, because they didn't change the Ginny actress, and she's trash, or at least was written <laughs> as trash. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, they definitely made Jenny worse in the movies, but, uh, but you're so absolutely sad. right. I think on, on that. Uh, yeah. So anyway, the quote. And then I guess the the joke is then is uh, J.K. Rowling actually a Slytherin? She says oh she's a Hufflepuff, God. but oh wow, yeah. Uh, I just <laughs> got. I saw it click in your face. That <laughs> was good. <laughs> this is some good uh, fantasy stuff. Fantasy world building. This is like I feel like I just talked about this with. We, was this just we did this like a few minutes ago for join the party <laughs> or, or the in party? this episode <laughs> no when you talk about I've been talking about just like world building because I've been reading a lot of um, of Name of the Name Wind, of the yes, wind. Yes, this episode, episode. Yes. right and it's just like when you do world building you intentionally have instruments of construction that are supposed to like show privilege or show racism and sexism for example the mud blood stuff mm-hmm. it's yeah. like you are making an allegory between the magic and the non-magic and it's very discriminatory mm-hmm. but like written here 
there aren't that many racial connotations. So it's like you can play with this. So actually making Hermione as like a black actress makes sense because mm-hmm. she's discriminated against throughout the entire thing. Sure. So she's actually given an opportunity to cast in a sort of like resonant, smart way. While the other hand is like if you are having like racism and sexism on top of the fantasy racism and sexism you're creating, you're just like putting yourself into a box for no reason. And then Mm. if you go the argument that, oh, but like statistically in England, which is the comment that has been made before, statistically Mm -hmm. this or that, there should be a lot more diversity anyway because there's so much immigration from the former colonies all around the world. Or in your book series about magic make-em-ups, just just make it more diverse. Oh, it's like, it's like, who cares if it's accurate to what the UK is like, "Ah, let's make, let's have it be more diverse. Why not? It's a pretend book about pretend people and pretend things. And if we're being accurate about the amount of wizards in the UK anyway, the book would not exist. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Hot take. Oh, love Hot take. Take. Wow. Perfect take. So anyway, uh, Ginny, which God, she's so perfect. This line uh, is so She good. just looks at this happening and goes, "Looks like he's eating her face, doesn't it?" Which I just imagined her like standing cross armed, like shoulder to shoulder with Harry, just observing Ron making out with Lavender, not like looking away. Didn't just- you do that in high school? <laughs> So looks like he's eating her face, doesn't it? Ginny said disappointingly. <laughs> but I suppose he's got to refine his technique somehow. Good game, Harry. And then she leaves. Oh my God. She's, she's bringing perfect. the burns oh, together because it's the reference to the earlier mm-hmm. one how he's never made out with anybody. Mm-hmm. Yep. I love amazing. it. She Continuity is. in your burns. Oh, that's amazing. I, I do appreciate how much thought was put into Ginny just being the best. Yes, yeah, so good. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Harry then gets a swooping sensation when Ginny pats his arm when she says good game and and I just love how he didn't know he had a crush for Ginny, and now it's like zero to 100 real quick, to quote the great poet Drake. It's just like he is <laughs> so like, oh, my God, now I have like everything Ginny does. It's like uh, like someone says the letter G, and he's like, G, Ginny. Uh, like he's so head over heels right now. I love how rapidly it happened. And it's I'm so also good. really impressed with how it's described that he feels about her like there's a monster inside him Uh uh or it feels like if a lightning bolt hit him which is like you have a you've got one a little on the nose (laughs) a little on the 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 forehead forehead. (laughs) yeah high five the mic's the mic's Uh, so he notices Hermione leaving um, having seen the Ron situation so like walks in sees it moves you know classic high school movie Harry finds her in an unlocked classroom with conjured birds flying around her head so this is from before from the transfiguration class the ones that shit on Seamus's face once he didn't get on the team. These birds have great comedic timing. Uh, so <laughs> Hermione says in, quote, an unnaturally high-pitched voice, Ron seems to be enjoying the celebrations. So now we've got, like, the confirmed proof that Hermione also loves Ron. We definitely had the point before when Ronnie had, when <laughs> Ronnie, when Ron had the different tone towards Hermione when she says that she wanted to invite him to the Christmas party. Now we've got this change of tone here with Hermione that she's like, I have big feelings for this guy too, which tore my heart apart because, like, Hermione is so good and so pure and she's never done anything really bad. And it's just, like, it sucks that Ron is doing this just to, like, he's doing it just to shit on her and Ginny. And it's like, uh, it also uh, sucks that Hermione is also like attracted to Ron. Yeah, that just just sucks. For I her. mean, I, they make sense. just in general. You mean like, in general uh, yeah. that sucks? Like, I, I, like you know, it it may get better. It probably yeah. won't. So continuing the theme of perfect timing, Ron and Lavender bust in to continue this makeout session. Uh, I don't know what uh, they were going to do, that they're going to what they think is going to be an empty classroom. They were in Homework. their private, they were in the, the Gryffindor section only of the of the castle. There's no other room in that entire section that they have to leave there, go through several hallways, and then go to this classroom. They couldn't find anywhere else. It's probably the same thought that Hermione had is like, everyone knows this classroom is unlocked or something. So I'm going to go in here and cry and no one will see me. I guess their thought process, let's just go into this empty classroom. It's unlocked. We can whatever we're going to do. Further Didn't you proof. have to like find places to make out when you were in high school? Yeah, that's not. Like totally a thing. Make, totally makes sense to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But also, this is like, like a cat. There's well, so much other It's options. more like a college. It's like, you know, you go to buildings and some of them have dorms, but and yeah. then there's also classes on top of them. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. It's but, like, like, yeah. but I'm saying like, if that's the case, they're already in their dorm hall and then they leave you're to saying go they to one have of gone their into, academic halls. You're saying they should have gone into someone's like dorm room and closed the door sure they have but it's rooms shared. in there 
Yeah, can't sex, you, what are they going to sex aisle and like? There's a, a party going on. Tech, 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 tech. Hold on, there's a there's a party going on. No one's going to want to. No, be I think in there, Brandon. Yeah. This might just be an NYU thing because we there were. So yeah, many, it might be because there were school because NYU is in New York City and now it's super expensive and terrible. That <laughs> oh, like no. your dorm your dorm had classrooms in it. Yeah, so like so. in my class, you could go downstairs into the laundry room and then but there was a hallway that had like classrooms where there was um, recitations. So like, and people hooked up down there. I I mean that makes sense. I guess I I mean I went to another expensive, horrible school, GW, <laughs> and and there's there you don't have that. I would still say like knowing the layout that they've described a lot, and it's an interesting layout mm-hmm. of the school specifically, like the Gryffindor area, because we see the most of that. There were other options. This couldn't have been the obvious first place to go, other than just. Uh, J.K. Rowling being mean to Hermione, and we do oh. know that they make good decisions on the first try every time. So <laughs> that's true. Ron okay. does do a good what job. They, every time. Here's what you should have done: you go to the room of requirements, and oh, then just you got everything. Do you, think, do you think that Ron can do the room of requirement on the first time? I bet you lavender. Can. Can. I bet lavender. But there's can. just like, yeah. But Ro- you think Ron's gonna try to impress her and be like, mm, "Babe, I got this." Like, Let's go to this classroom <laughs> that my love interest certainly is not in. <laughs> hookup spot <laughs> like what do you think was gonna happen <laughs> i solemnly swear that i need a hookup like what? i don't know what you're thinking that is exactly how i'm using that room every time uh, I, saw... I wish <laughs> oh my goodness this also proves what i said before that this is a teen drama because this is such a thing that yeah, happens yeah 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 this i is saw the grassy episode that was just like this is yeah, literally this is grassy. Grassy. ron and lavender busting. and the drake shows up again <laughs> yeah, yeah, there. Drake! Uh, so, so ron and lavender burst in and lavender backs out of the room very awkwardly ron stands there even more awkwardly not <laughs> looking at not looking at her and not looking at hermione who says you shouldn't leave lavender waiting outside she'll wonder where you've gone which like even in this like crumbling get moment, get hermione can be so Ugh. mean and awful she knows that it'll make ron feel worse if she doesn't like insult him she just lays the like good guy card because yeah. that's like the worst thing ever like she is so smart to do this but also it could just be her just like being so distraught that she doesn't have time for a quip remark i think either A&B. or I think and A&B. then yeah A&B. and then <laughs> uh yeah so hermione then busts out of the room yeah. and ron he looks relieved uh, but from the doorway, she casts a spell that makes the birds plunge down onto Ron and peck and claw at him, just like for any bit of skin that they can find on his face. I like that Hermione, like, I'm gonna take the high road, and then she leaves, and she's like, fuck that high road. I'm yes! taking the low one. Yes! The underpass is mine. Yes! <laughs> this is, have we talked about spell names before? Because this is uh, a pungo. Uh-huh. And like I don't, what could that be? It's got to be Latin. And, uh, yeah, I think they're all. Let's. They're look. like vaguely Latin. They're all. Yeah, most of them are vaguely Latin. Wasn't muffaletta? Mu- no, that's, yeah, like, that's a sandwich. That's a sandwich. Muffaletta is a sandwich. <laughs> it's a very, very good very sandwich. Good sandwich. <laughs> but muffaliato sure, is, is, a is also like a weird muffle. sandwich. It's, that's, yeah, it's less, less good, good sandwich. <laughs> We're literally making this. <laughs> I got it. Uh, yeah, it, it's Latin. Apungo is mm-hmm. from the Latin of apunga, apungnare, yeah. which is to attack. Oh, so nice. it's literally oh, just attack. Cool. Thanks, JK. Yeah, I took Latin in high school. I wish I did this podcast earlier. Thanks, I would have known the stuff. <laughs> but anyway, amazing move by Hermione. And the chapter unfortunately ends with Ron screaming, Hermione leaving, and Harry hearing her sob. As, as and that's she the end of the, the chapter. Door. As she closed the door. And that's the end of the chapter. And that's the end of this episode of Potterless. Oh, but, God. oh, boys and night, how are you guys feeling about this half of chapter 14? <laughs> 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 this is why I don't have three guests traditionally. Oh, and, I mean, maybe some people would be happy because then there'd be 6,000 episodes of Potter. But also yes. there's some chapters I think that work well for this. This, being this one is of a them. very juicy meaty there's chapter. A lot there's a lot going the on. Whole thing. Yeah and we had to debunk the Space Jam conspiracy which <laughs> sure. took some time. I don't know if we debunked it. We, I think deb- we just we proved, just proved it. it. <laughs> it's de- I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so what did we learn? We learned that Drake goes to Hogwarts. Yeah. We sure. learned that Space Jam and Hog- and Harry Potter are the same. As yeah. is Degrassi. As- yes. And Degrassi is also inside of Hogwarts. Sure. Mm-hmm. Because that's why you can't apparate in a into the Degrassi. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> of course, of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and you, <laughs> Amanda really liked that one. <laughs> and we learned that Quidditch is bad. It, yep. It's bad. And which we learn every week on Potterless. So join Can the I, party. I, guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. want to come back and defend Quidditch at Go some do point. It. Let's do oh, it. I got to do a lot more research, oh, but sorry, I want to Your it. mic's getting cut. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you, you're going, you're going through a tunnel. <laughs> I don't know if it was fully planned, but I think it was really lucky. 
Oh, okay, okay. That we anyway, got this defend episode, Quidditch. It's very... you have... Not right now. No, I need. To... Be... Oh, you just so wanna... it's like a it's like you know when you're in, in debate class and you get the prompt that you don't agree with, but you still have to defend. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to do that. Okay, like, devil's advocate. <laughs> Ooh, I got that. We should. That'd be a fun bonus episode. A Lincoln Douglas style debate <laughs> of Quidditch with like oh, time God, point so counterpoint much. like rebuttal. That's very good. I want that All so stuff. much. But yeah, join the party, boys. Thanks for joining this party. Uh, you guys want to give a brief little like blurb for for join the party? Uh, I mean, I've talked about it a lot on the podcast it's mostly just fish making the same types of jokes Ooh, he has on yeah. this one okay, so yeah. if you really Luckily, enjoy you puns listen to uh, it if you go to, uh, and we edit out all the groans so you can <laughs> so you can just have it at home uh, did we really i don't think we do <laughs> no uh join the party is a collaborative storytelling game with four friends and it's queer and it's fun and it's ridiculous and if you love dungeons and dragons but mostly if you like fantasy stories and you like friends having fun together and you like cool teens and gargoyles and robots and cool dads cool dads especially mm -hmm. just like come listen if you want to learn how to play dungeons and dragons we actually have the best thing for you mm -hmm. our first two episodes are beginners episodes like yeah. they we inserted amanda mclaughlin who you might have heard from various other episodes like she, the last one like the last episode <laughs> who comes in and like explains how D, D is played you hear part of the audio story and then she pops in and she's like oh dude roll a 20 side to die and like mm -hmm. have fun with your friends yeah so it's good it's a great introduction because there's a lot of very good D, &D podcasts out there and join the party is a great introduction to it because you have those setup episodes are kind of tell you how the game works and then after every episode you guys have a after party episode yes. uh, which I was featured on one or yeah. 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 you get after party episodes where you talk about what happened and stuff so it's very good because I know when my first Dungeons and Dragons podcast was the Adventure Zone and for a while I had to like text Eric and be like what's what huh what is this thing yeah. <laughs> like so it's good that join the party kind of answers those questions for you but yeah fun multitude podcast and glad we got to have a little multitude sesh today so thank you guys so much for being a part of this and making lame jokes with me and listeners thanks so much for listening until next time as they say when they cling their clink their butterbeer glasses at big uh, gryffindor uh, uh, quidditch parties it looks like ron's eating that girl's face <laughs> wizard <Anna! laughs> i talk about potters interacting with listeners on twitter a lot but did you also know that we're on instagram if you go to instagram.com slash powerless podcast, you can see some funny photos and see some behind the scenes type stuff on the stories that I post. Powerless was created by Mike Schubert. It is hosted by Mike Schubert. It is edited by Mike Schubert. It is produced by Mike Schubert, as well as Leon Davis, Vicky Garcia, Aaron Johnson, Erica and Calvin Bauer, Sadie Baer, Jesse Horgan, Natalie Klobuchar, Deborah Wilkins, Klaus Lopu, Alex Stark, Rebecca Adamek, Frank Chiodo, Marchismo, Tori Larsic, Samantha Rose, Juan Sanfelio, Sheila Vidya, Nathan, Jenna Dowsett, Kieran Webb, Luis Nusak, Akanksha Saxena, Rebecca Vincenes, Abita Med, Caitlin Jordan Pontolo, Licia Ru, Benjamin Bridges, Rosemary Dodge, Jill Boulay, Maria Lisa C. Keen, Maria Paulton, Ariel Bird, Romina Rivadanira, Camille Doc, Anthony Bonrigo, Diego Matienza, Andrew Clack, Celeste Smith, Russell Dunk, Jenny Nielsen, Dustin Mullen, Cooch, Katie Rogers, Audra, Indiana Mercer, Eleanor Curlin, Sydney Cawthorn, Billy Hinton, Rose Ann Batamana, Mikey Cool, Andrea Franz, Nikita Power, Colette Smith, Chrissy Blackburn, Trina Unadcat, Jeremy Bonnie, Stephen Gonye, Lala Palmer, Chelsea Green, Taylor Armstead, Sammy Curdy, Lovekesh Longer, Shivarni Patel, Ali Madsen, Kalmage, Cassandra Aponte, Roxy Sanchez, Melissa Traver, Ali Kraus, and Vince Clancy. Web design by Kelly Beckman. And the music is by Bettina Campomanes. You can find us at twitter.com slash potterlesspod, facebook.com slash potterless, instagram.com slash potterlesspodcast, and potterlesspodcast.com. For bonus content, go to patreon.com slash potterless. And if you like the show, tell a friend about it. Thank you guys so much for listening. And until next time, as they say in the wizarding world of Harry Potter, wizard on! <laughs>